joint remembrance of the victims of the Shoah. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu came to the Gleis 17 Memorial at Grunewald Station in Berlin. From this platform, about 10,000 Jews were deported to concentration and extermination camps by the Nazis during World War II. That we in Germany can say, after the immeasurable crimes against humanity of the Shoah, that Israel and Germany are friends, strategic partners and allies, that is a precious gift. It is by no means to be taken for granted. For that we are very grateful to Israel. This alliance of the two countries and their special relationship are the result of a decades-long rapprochement. Of course, we have a special responsibility and a special relationship with Israel because of our history, because of the Shoah. And this relationship has got ever stronger over the years. After the Holocaust, the mass murder of six million Jews by Nazi Germany, many Israelis didn't want to have any dealings with the land of the perpetrators. Some still don't want it today. In 1951, six years after the end of the Second World War, Konrad Adenauer, the first Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, for the first time called the Holocaust an unspeakable crime against the Jews. He promised moral and material reparations. Slowly, the two countries were able to move closer together. David Ben-Gurion, Israel's first Prime Minister, stood for this like no other. He promoted a view of Germany as the other Germany. And so it came about that Ben-Gurion met with Adenauer, at first only unofficially. The relationship between the two statesmen laid the foundation for diplomatic relations between Israel and Germany. But the psychological scars of the Holocaust ran deep. When Germany sent its first ambassador to Israel in 1965, his arrival was accompanied by anger and protest on Israel's streets. A crucial event for the relationship between Israel and Germany was the Munich massacre in September 1972. Palestinian terrorists took 11 Israeli athletes hostage. All of the athletes were killed. The catastrophe and the mourning for the victims put a strain on relations, but did not divide the nations in the long term. A milestone was former German Chancellor Angela Merkel's speech to the Knesset in 2008. Every German government and every German chancellor prior to me were committed to Germany's special historical responsibility for Israel's security. The former German chancellor declared Israel's security to be fundamental to the existence of the German state. That was a very important speech, not to say a historic speech. Almost everyone took part. Only 10 members of parliament stayed away. That was also a signal from the Israeli side. We want to take this hand that is being given there, that is being extended. And secondly, she coined the historic sentence there that Germany has a special relationship with Israel, always will have, and that this also results in a special responsibility for the security of the state of Israel. Olaf Scholz reaffirms this promise 15 years later. Israel's security is a reason of state for us. That's what this federal government stands for. Israel can rely on that. But there are also differences in relations between Germany and Israel. Germany is in favor of the so-called two-state solution. In other words, a Palestinian state alongside the Israeli state. The German government has supported this project for decades through large financial contributions to the Palestinians. German foreign policy makers used their good relations with the Palestinians to campaign on both sides for a peaceful solution to the Middle East conflict. But parts of the Israeli government now no longer accept the idea. There is also anything but unity with regard to Israel's settlement policy. Angela Merkel had already taken a stand against settlement construction in the occupied West Bank. On the question of settlement issues, we have agreed to disagree. 
Selbstverständlich ist Deutschland nicht immer mit allem einverstanden. Of course, Germany does not always agree with everything that happens in Israel or what Israel does to its neighbors or the Palestinians. But it holds back from too much criticism. Naturally, the Israelis on the left wing find this somewhat embarrassing. They expect Germany to take a firmer stance when it comes to human rights, when it comes to relations between the occupier and the occupied. Now Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock are criticizing Netanyahu's planned judicial reform. The reform would give the Knesset more power. Until now, the Supreme Court has reviewed the legality of laws, ordinances and decrees from the Knesset. The planned reform would give Parliament the right to overrule the decisions of the Supreme Court justices with a simple majority. Critics see the independence of the judiciary and with that democracy in Israel in danger. Hundreds of thousands in Israel have been taking to the streets for weeks against this. As partners who share democratic values and close friends of Israel, we are following this debate very closely, and I will not conceal this with great concern. The independence of the judiciary is a high democratic good. Nevertheless, the relationship between Germany and Israel remains unique. We can rely on Germany when we need something, whether in terms of diplomacy, economic relations or politics, we can count on Germany to provide it. For Germany, the relationship with Israel is and remains particularly worthy of protection. From this terrible past for which Germany bears responsibility, we have an everlasting responsibility for the future.